few weeks ago, we did a simulation of a Dodge Charger with a Daytona body kit. And some people were really freaked out. Not you amigos, but some internet people. They were outraged about how it wasn't a proper Daytona and I'm the spawn of Satan, blah, blah, blah. So we did a simulation of an actual Daytona. Are you happy now? Immediately, it is clear that the flow is much better over this real Daytona. The flow stays attached over the rear window and the flow hitting the windshield is directed quite smoothly over the roof and the flow stays attached even over there. And there isn't too much recirculation where the hood meets the windshield either. All of that is really good for drag reduction. Under the car, the front air dam works surprisingly well because even though the air around it is chaotic and separates, it limits the amount of air going under the car. The flow stays attached over the underbody as well. The diffuser could use some work though because the flow detaches a little and is quite slow. We'll see some more negative effects of it later on. From this angle, the flow over the top side is impressive. It is completely attached and while the front air dam works well, it could be improved upon by angling it so that the flow isn't being directed up into the front wheel and wheelhouse as much, that is creating more wheel drag. From this view, we can see that the sharp ends to the nose cone splits the flow so that the air going around the sides doesn't jump up over the hood and vice versa. That helps reduce drag and lift. There are also small wakes just downstream of the front wheels. That is because you have air coming out of the wheelhouses that slightly increases drag. Around the back, the wake is really small for such a large car. It is also very steady, which is a result of the rear terminating sharply. We can see here that the flow stays attached very nicely over the rear window, and it funnels in from the sides to inside the support structure of the rear wing. Despite that flow angularity, the rear vertical struts don't have much of a wake though, so the flow is still quite attached. Looking at the vortices, because the car is sleek, there aren't that many. Some come from around the wheels, which is to be expected. Given the era this car was designed in, the vortices from the A-pillars are very small. In fact, they are pretty small even by today's standards. The diffuser is producing most of the vortices we can see here though. Now the old simulation of the Charger with the Daytona body kit had a drag coefficient of 0.75. What does this real Daytona come out to be? It comes in at just 0.34, which is almost half what other cars at the time were. It also had a downforce coefficient of 0.045.